This is a little Emerson clock radio that belongs to one of my girlfriend's clients, and she really likes it, but it sparked on her because, check this out, this wire has been so worn that it finally broke, and I guess it arced right here. But she really likes the radio, and she was wondering if it could be fixed. Well, my girlfriend, of course, said, I know a guy that just might be able to fix that. So here we go. Let's see if we can fix this. So I think the first thing to do is take this apart, it's right above where this wire enters. It's just Phillips screws. Let's see, how's that come out of there? Well, maybe I'll take this one off also. See what this little screw is holding. Ah, that is a uh, battery, probably a backup battery for when the power goes out. Interesting. Okay. So that doesn't want to come out of there. It's interlocked under there. I can feel it. All right. So I'm going to take apart the rest of this case. I can tell this has been well used. I mean, you can see the uh, the accumulation of wear on the the case. These screws over here, they're different. They're all a little bit longer. All right. Huh. Looks like to get behind that circuit board, I've got to take it off. There's there's some screws here mounting the circuit board to the back casing. This ribbon wire is plugged onto the front controller. I'm going to unplug that. There we go. So we can separate that. This little wire here, it looks like it is soldered. See the screws holding the circuit board? There's two there, there's two there. Um, we're going to take those out so we can get behind the circuit board. There we go. Now, how can we get into this? Aha! There. And yeah, this is a good thing. There's a retainer, there's a big retainer screw, or uh, I don't know, there's a screw that holds like a retainer. I don't know, does that show up very well in the video? Right there. That's clamping the cord where it goes into the housing, and then the cord is going back behind this. So we're going to have to disassemble that. All right. There we go. That's just a little retainer. Here's the screw for it. And then the cord is wrapped around that post. And there we go. We have to get behind this.
box of screws. It's just a little cover. There's a transformer there. I'm going to put the screws in that to keep those together. But see that transformer? That's the power source right there. Oh, and look at that. It's a sealed transformer. The wire goes into the transformer and is sealed in there. So, what that means is I'm going to have to do a wire splice. I'm going to have to cut the bad part out of here and do a wire splice. And I think I'll do that up this way so the wire splice will be end up being inside the case of the radio. Now there's a couple of ways to approach this. You can see clearly here how the wire is just broken right there. I can uh, cut this out and solder these wires back together. Or I can use splice connectors, crimp connectors. I'm going to try the crimp connectors first. And if that doesn't work, if I can't seem to fit it in, then I'll go ahead and do a solder joint, which will be a little more com compact. But I like the idea of these. Now, this is a polarized plug, which means it plugs into an outlet the same way all the time. See how one blade, that blade of the plug is wider than that blade. That's done so that this device always plugs in a certain way into the outlet, and you can't reverse the continuity. What that means is that I'm going to cut this, and I've got to keep this continuity the same. Uh, now, here's another thing I noticed after clipping the wire. See, this wire has a white sheathing there and there. This one is black on the opposite side. So, that helps me um, keep my continuity, my alignment right when I put them back together. That's nice. That's a big help. To reassemble them, keeping that in alignment, I'm going to maintain the polarity on my plug. So I need to strip back the casing on the cord so I can get to both of these wires. Okay, cut that off here. And strip our wire back. About three eighths of an inch. And twist the copper strands together. All right, those are ready. So those are going to insert that way. Okay, they're inserted in there pretty well. Now, this cord has to go through the opening down here. Come off there. Maybe I should do one at a time. We'll do that one at a time. This inserts in the other end. And then we crimp them with our crimper jaw, our wiring tool. Yeah, that one's solid. that was crimped. Yeah, that feels solid. All right. And crimp. All right. That's solid. Tug on it. Everything stays. 
So that's solid. Now it's a matter of reassembling all this and trying to be sure that those, those splices are going to fit down inside the housing. Splice connectors are a little large, and I got to get them down behind here. So if I fold them in kind of like that, and then bring this wire back around that wire clamp, Let's see, will that line up? Yeah, that looks like it works pretty well. So I put the wire clamp back on there. Okay, there we go. And it looks like that all just tucked down there. I can put this shield back over the transformer. That cord has to go through the slot. And then this clamps it back in. Okay, I think that's all proper. All my little switches line up here. They all slide. Okay, so we're going to plug this ribbon back onto its socket and then assemble the body back together. Okay, how does this work? Everything's attached. We're ready to give it a test. Let's test it. We'll plug it in and see what happens. Excuse me. Yeah, we're getting some numbers. Yeah, look at that. Looks like it works. Got to set the clock. Low battery's flashing, but yeah, haven't even put that in. How about the radio? Yeah! It's fixed!